Welcome back, everybody, to the Classic Firearms Podcast. I'm your host, Clint, and we've got Katie back with us. How's it going, guys? And we've got our special guest and no stranger to the channel, Erdalkaya. Did, How's it did, going? Did I say that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It was Perfect. It? Was that good? That was actually very good. Some oh. people call me Turtle. Tur- <laughs> I'm like, okay. Well, sure. I call you Turd. I know. Wow. That's different. That's my <laughs> middle name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Kaya with SAR USA. Uh, Kaya, uh, give us a little bit. Well, first of all, I mean, so when we introduce you and everything, is Erdal Kaya good? Just you go by Kaya? How do, how do, how do you want people to know you? Well, I'm um, uh, Kaya. I prefer Kaya. And reason being, um, just law enforcement and, you know, military. When you first get in, they stamp that your last name mm-hmm. on your back, right? And everybody uses each other's last names. Right. So... My first name is Erdal, E-R-D-A-L. Last name is Kaya, K-A-Y-A. Kaya is also a first name Mm -hmm. uh, in in Turkish names. And uh, so I became Kaya when I first got in law enforcement, and everybody called me Kaya. And in fact, I didn't even know some of my friends' first names that I was really close with. Yeah. So uh, in the last, I'd say, what, 11 years now, uh, everybody calls me Kaya. So I basically transition into being Kaya. Right. So nobody calls me at all except my family. Yeah, I, I totally get that because there's some guys that I serve in the Marines with currently. <clears throat> and I'm like, uh, oh, wait, what, what's your first name again? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. So, Kaya, you were born in Turkey, right? Yeah. OK. And um, so like how long did you spend most of your childhood in Turkey or when did you come to the U.S.? Yeah, uh, I was born in Turkey in yeah. 1983. Okay. Almost, almost 39. Yeah, old. Yeah. And, uh, Don't look it. Good. That's the um, first compliment I've wow, given you actually, ever. Wow, actually, I'm not surprised. <laughs> actually, I think that's the first compliment I've ever heard Katie give. So That's not okay. true. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay, very, very good. Anyways, <laughs> almost 39. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I was born in Turkey, and I spent basically after high, high school, a little bit of college, dropped out of college. Yeah. And uh, from Istanbul, well, I went to Istanbul University right about 18 years old. And moved to the United States when I was 20, almost 20. Yeah. Right around oh, that so time. you spent like <clears throat> your entire childhood in Turkey. It, absolutely. And oh. then now almost other half of my life here. Right. I basically, uh, I lived at home with mom and dad. So when I moved to the United States, like it was just me, like by mm-hmm. myself as this 20 year old kid. Um, it was different. Yeah. But it, where, grew up where, very quickly. Yeah, where at in the U.S. did you move into initially? Uh, first, Atlanta, Georgia. I was there for a year. Oh, there's some shock for you. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, everything was <laughs> yeah. just everything was a shock. Like, just completely different countries, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah, it was Atlanta, Georgia for for a year, and then uh, Chicago, this Chicago area. The remainder of my life. Here. Yeah. Well, I did go to Washington D.C. for a little bit, and Seattle for a couple of years almost, and then I'm back to Chicago. Man, you but really like those, um, <laughs> let's just say, um, complicated areas uh, of, of the United <laughs> States, don't you? Uh, <laughs> the whole D.C. area and the Seattle was not really my choice, but uh, Chicago definitely mine. I, I, you know what? I uh, well, I li- lived most of my time here in the United yeah. States in the suburbs of Chicago. Currently, I live in downtown Chicago just because, you know, let me let me see how it is down there to live. It's OK. Yeah, I was, was going to say, so uh, is it like, well, go ahead, Katie. What are you going to say? I'm really yeah. just like floored. Like you came to the south and you're like, nope, we're, we're no, going to no, go no. to Chicago. No, that's not what it was. I was actually <laughs> I was actually with somebody and she I was making like, I don't know, eight bucks an hour mm. somewhere. And she was she had a better job and her company transferred her to Illinois. Oh, okay. So I just like left my job and moved with her. Yeah, right? I got you. So that, that's why. Like I, I didn't pick Illinois. So did Illinois you move? Did me. you <laughs> did you move from Turkey for a girl in the U.S. too? No. I'm just saying. Like, no. are so, we just gonna move so all of our life? So changes? that is that is a good question though. Like, so <laughs> why why the U.S.? Okay. Well, all right. I don't know the answer because it's got some backstory. Ever since I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. At that time, I didn't know what U.S. was, what Europe was, right? It was just West. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since I was a little kid, I was fascinated by Western culture and Western lifestyle. And how did I know that? From movies or TV shows and whatever, right? Right. And um, for some weird reason, and and again, I don't know the reason for it, uh, internally, I was very drawn to it. 
And I was like, man, I, I don't, I don't want to live here. Like, I want to live there. And I was a kid. I remember my mom was uh, washing dishes and I was helping her out, right, with the dishes. And I was, it was right after dinner. I was 11 years old. I was like, Mom, I'm, uh, I'm going to live out west. I'm going to marry somebody over there and I'm just going to, that's where I want to live. And I remember, like, I was to her left, right? She stopped. She's like, what? Like, where did that yeah. come from? Yeah. Like, she had no clue. Where, and it was just... I, I don't know what it was. And that feeling never left me. Mm. It never did. So it was not like a, you know, kids want things and they forget the next day. No, <laughs> right. That thing never left me. And then uh, when it was time to go to high school, in Turkey, you can actually go to like these special high schools. They teach you careers, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Electrical and stuff or... Yeah, like so like trade schools. Tra yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In uh, You could either go to regular st uh, school or you could actually... Uh, take a test and if you actually place well you could go to those special schools um so i wanted to go to a hotel and tourism management uh high school because i knew with that i'd be exposed to west more right. western culture more yeah. that was like i mean this is a plan like yeah. in my mm -hmm. head i'm like i gotta do this i gotta learn this like it was just i was a man on a mission like kid on a mission let's just say um and my dad is a retired policeman uh, in Turkey, and my mom is a housewife. So it's a uh, police thing influenced me a little bit, which we'll get to it. But uh, I didn't really had, have any other influences in my right. life, right? Mm. And uh, so I went to that high school. And first things first, it was 1998, and they taught us English. Just some basic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then with that little bit of an English that I had, I was able to go work at some of these some of these tourism uh hot like hot spots or southern turkey by the beaches or these uh these hotels and whatever mm -hmm. uh and met these it was mostly german people i was like okay well i learned english right i, I, I can't even use it yeah because <laughs> i learned german now so i just started to learn a little bit german just so i could talk to these people and continuously observed the culture yeah and as i got older I started to see how people were. There were some Russians there, English, Germans, French, all kinds of people uh, vacationing there in southern yeah. Turkey. And I was like, okay, trying to figure out. And then I met some Americans. Now I was able to use my English a little bit, which was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Oh, dude. It was, my English was so bad when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. Because well, I'll get to it. But <laughs> it was. And that's when I realized, I was like, okay, Europe, because I, and then I lived in Istanbul, right? I was like, Istanbul, Europe, it looks pretty similar to me from everything I see. Mm -hmm. I zoned in on the United States. Yeah. Right. I was like, okay, that is completely different. It's the superpower. And people that I met seems to be super laid back. Just, it, just overall vibe was perfect for me. Yeah. Loved it. Right. And well, with that being said, I got my sights on at that point for U.S. And then I went to university, Istanbul University. I did the hotel management thing just to get my career, further my career in hotel business there. And uh, moved to the United States to do even better here. Mm -hmm. And, that, and uh, that's kind of how it happened for me to come out here. I got you. And it's been, it's been working out for you, I'd say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, but I mean, you're you know, on this podcast with us. So I mean, like, what more could you ask for? That's right. Dream come true. I mean, you're getting <laughs> to sit next to me, Kaya. Oh, my God. That's it. That's why I moved <laughs> to the United States. It's the world's I moved the biggest here dream. For some, someday I could sit next to you. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, I'm absolutely honored to be yeah. here. You guys are amazing people. I'm not joking right now. Although we joke a lot. <laughs> this is true. You guys are awesome. Well, thank you, man. And it's, yeah. and it's a pleasure having you as, yeah. as well. And Thank um, you. So with that too, let's let's get into a little bit of your history because you talked about your dad being law enforcement yeah. and that probably influenced a little bit of your decisions of what type of career you would go into. And uh, we've talked with you on video before. Uh, we've done some introductions with you and uh, you know we've done plenty of interviews with you like at SHOT Show and the NRA Annual Meet. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know you guys sponsored the Loadout Series, uh, SAR USA, that uh, Katie, myself, and Matt did with the uh, three concealed carry pistols and Alpha yeah. Omega Kydex holsters and all sorts of fun stuff there. And... Um, 
So what got you, we'll, we'll eventually get you in a, uh, and talk about like SAR USA and, and, uh, and what got you involved with that and getting into the industry. Uh, but as far as your law enforcement career goes, can you walk us through that? Cause you, it sounds like you've done some pretty impressive things. You've told us some stories, you know, we've laughed a couple and we were like, oh my God, at a few, but yeah, feel <laughs> free to share whatever you want to share, man. And, and we just want to learn a little bit more about you. Of course, man. Uh, well, uh, yes, my dad being a retired cop, it's, I grew up around cops, right? Turkish cops, but law enforcement is really law enforcement. Um, the mission is very similar. Uh, so that had some influence in my life for sure. Uh, but I had a different career path, hotel business, right? Mm -hmm. So when I first moved to the United States, uh, it was a huge like uphill battle for me because I couldn't really speak English all that well mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And forget that. Uh, learning the culture, oh, yeah. speaking the language in a way where you can understand the street language, mm -hmm. right? Th there was a lot of things going on and uh, I was lost. Like legitimately, I mean this, uh, I felt like a little baby mm -hmm. where I had to relearn everything. Yeah. I hear I am 20 year old kid, right? Now I like felt like a year old. I mm -hmm. had to relearn everything. It was a completely different world. But I had my sights. Like, I was determined, man. I. And by the way, I didn't immigrate here to... Cause th there are multiple people who have their own purposes, right? Mm -hmm. Some people just want to come out here, work a few years, make some money, go back to wherever. Yeah. Or some people just want to come out here. They want to have a better life, of course. it's a, It really is an amazing country. Mm -hmm. um, they want to have a better life. But they still want to live their own... Um, lives that they lived in wherever they came from and right. they live in those neighborhoods with those people around them not me man mm -hmm. i moved to the united states i was like i want to go there i want to be an american i want to be a patriotic american <laughs> like i'm i sincerely mean this like i had i was like that's it because i was a little kid that i wanted I, I knew that that's where i wanted to go just there's something about it so when i moved here i was like i want to be that guy and i want to go out there and surf nice and yeah, just just learn the culture, the language, and yeah. just do all that. And boy, that that hasn't been easy. And so I worked a lot of odd jobs, you know, a lot of trucks and sleep in the back of trucks and benches sometimes, whatever. Right? For eight years, I couldn't even go back to Turkey oh, to wow. visit my family. <clears throat> like, Wh why is that? I, I, like, uh, not yeah. because there are legal reasons, none of that right. stuff. It's yeah. just that I so didn't have any money. Run, yeah, like you couldn't afford. <laughs> it. I couldn't yeah. afford. Yeah, I, I couldn't afford. Like I remember. Three months after I got here, I texted my brother. I said, hey, man, uh, you guys are going to have to buy my plane ticket. I got to come back. I, I can't make it. I did. Mm -hmm. I sent that text, and my brother responded, and he was like, don't worry about it. Just tell us when, and we'll get it for it. You know? And my family is broke, Yeah. right? Nobody in my family had any money. And even typing that text message, I was like, oh, man, they're going to have to spend a few hundred dollars that they don't have. Yeah. But I, I can't make it here. I can't. I can't. You know, mm -hmm. it's tough. And then I remember I sat in my room and I was like, then what? Right. Yeah. That's the question I asked myself. I was like, okay, then what? Because when I was in Istanbul, I had nothing. Just, I didn't have a job. It was just not good for me. And I was like, okay, well, I will die here. I don't care. I'm not going back. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm going back there with my head up and I have something, I have something to myself, right? And that's when I'll go back. So, and I texted him back a, a few days later, actually. I texted him back. I said, just hold on. Just hang on. Uh, I'll, I got a couple things going on here. So, did a bunch of stuff. For eight years, I couldn't go back because I couldn't afford it. And worked at different hotels. I literally, like, cleaned rooms, folded sheets, cleaned bathrooms and whatever you call it. The front desk. and But I moved up. Mm -hmm. I slowly moved up. I, I slowly learned the language. The next thing you know, I got uh, this front office, uh, what was it, assistant manager thing at a tiny little bit of hotel. Then from there, I moved on to a little bit big, bigger hotel as an assistant manager. Then from there, I'm just moving up slowly. Mm -hmm. so, uh, went to a Hilton Garden Inn. Now I'm the front office manager, right? And then next thing you know, people are finding me on LinkedIn. And this big Hilton uh, comes in and is like, hey, do you want to be the assistant general manager of this hotel? Hell yeah. But in the meantime, I hate B2B. 
been in the hotel industry <laughs> <laughs> the entire time, but I don't know anything else. Yeah. Right. I know <clears throat> nothing else. And I only have high school degree because I dropped out mm -hmm. from, I went to college in Istanbul. I dropped out because I couldn't afford it. Right. Right. Just couldn't finish the university there. And so all I have is high school degree and all I know is hotels. Mm -hmm. I have no other expertise, but I always wanted to be a cop here. When I first got here and I saw these U.S. cops, right, they looked very well organized, very well equipped compared to what I was used to, right? Mm -hmm. And anytime I made contact with them, a couple of times I got pulled over, whatever, they were very nice. And they seemed like they were in their A game. Like they weren't mean to me, but they weren't like buddy buddy with me either. Mm -hmm. They're just very professional. And something about it was just very, uh, drew me in big time right and I was like wow this is really cool I'd love to be part of that team you know so I would just apply to police departments but I only had permanent like the green card the permanent right. residency card mm -hmm. and just a couple of departments accepted that yeah but most departments required uh, US citizenship which I, I fully understand and agree and I wouldn't make it like I'd apply here and there I couldn't even pass a written test because there are a lot of questions I couldn't understand. Right. I was yeah. like, all right, that's that's a good indicator. You're not ready. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, there's right. no way mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't survive out there. So I continued working in hotels and applying for these uh, police departments that I could. And then finally I had my five year completed. I was able to apply to be a US citizen. Mm -hmm. Went through that, um, became a US citizen f in February of twenty eleven. Yeah, was that a difficult process for you? Um, it was. It was. I mean, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. The whole process is not easy, as in, like, you really have to be on your A game when you're filling those forms out. Mm -hmm. Like, having an attorney, I think that money is probably well worth it because you make one mistake, your stuff gets lost, they kick it back. It takes months and months, a long time, because mm -hmm. they're all swamped, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got to do it right the first time. So I had an attorney and somebody helping me out, so I did a bunch of stuff and he spent so much money. And plus you have to study for the whole mm. US history and everything. And uh, yeah, I was able to um, get through that, went in. I'll never forget the day, February 17th, 2011, mm -hmm. right in the morning, sworn in as a US citizen. I was proud, very, very proud. And uh, guess what I did as soon as I went home? I went home that night, got on my computer, Started flying for police departments. Nice. <laughs> All kind of, uh, 15, yeah. 20 different police departments. Some I'd fail uh, their written test, whatever. Some I'd pass. I'd get the interview, get on the list. Nobody calls you back. Small, big, didn't matter. But there was a specific department that I wanted to get in. They, they seemed like a midsize uh, department where everybody still knew each other, but it was still busy and yeah. big enough, right? Yeah. yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So I applied all those and... Uh, I remember I, uh, well, before getting there, I, I applied to all those. And after my third try with a specific police department, I got my interview. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, I was still with the, uh, I was still the general manager. Well, act, at that time, I was the acting general manager because mm -hmm. my GM quit <laughs> at a Hilton, right? And, and I was making decent money, right? I got my interview. And I screwed up. <laughs> I screwed up because I rehearsed. Anybody who's listening, if you're going to have an interview, just don't find specific questions and have answers to those specific questions. Mm -hmm. Right. Just <clears throat> find applications to leadership and come up with examples, like three examples out of your life. Yeah. What did you do that showed leadership or yeah. whatever? Because that's going to be so much easier when they ask you a specific question. You can identify oh, this is a leadership type question. And you can right. pick one of those stories from your arsenal and just boom, oh, yeah, that's I've, the way to do it. Yeah, I've done, I, I, I suck at interviewing. Dude. Like I am so bad at it. And like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm lucky I got this job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, uh, you're very good at it. Uh, well, you yeah. know, some, of the, some of the viewers and listeners. Katie, you are too. Right no, I'm saying he needs to keep his head. We don't need his headphones to like pop off his head because no, his head gets stupid. Katie, <laughs> you're under the same roof as me. I, I'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> but anyway, okay, you cool. So, so you so you bombed the interview. Here's what happened. Again, this is my third try with these guys. Yeah. So I already got two rejections from them. Yeah. I'm back third time. 
I s prepared like 10, I prepared like, well, they asked 10 questions, but I prepared like for, I don't know, 40, 50 possible uh, questions, panel yeah. interview. And I go in and they ask me nothing yeah, I, I knew prepared it. for. I, I knew it. Nothing you prepared for. Absolutely. The only question they asked me was, why should we hire you? Kind of like, why you kind of yeah, thing, which yeah. is, I think that's given in every interview, right? You guys sell yourself. And here I am in front of a panel of five people who have very finely tuned bullshit <laughs> trying to bullshit them on yeah. the spot. Just like come up with something, right? Mm -hmm. it, it just wasn't good. It wasn't pretty, let's just say. And they asked me the last question. Why should we hire you? Why you, right? Well, I'm a hard worker. I'm this and the standard answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Get up, shake their hands. I follow it, like firm sh handshake, eye contact. And I'm, walk I'm walking away. It's like a um, pretty big room. So I have about 20 feet, whatever, to walk back to the door. And as I'm walking away, my back is turned to them. I'm like, I screwed up. That's done. This, is, this was my shot. I had an interview. I blew it. I was like, I, I suddenly just on a wimp, I just turned around mm -hmm. to them. And I literally said, commissioners, and there was a deputy chief from the department there too, said, commissioners, deputy chief, I like to say one more thing before I leave. Because they're like, oh, shocked, kind of like, what's up? Mm -hmm. And that just came out of heart directly, right? Because I really, really wanted it, and I knew that was done for. I was like, hey, listen, everybody out there waiting, they want this job. I'm sure they do. But to me, none of them wanted as much as I do. So I applied here three times. This is my third time. And if you, do, if you guys don't give me the opportunity, I understand, I will be back the fourth time. I wanna work here. This is where I wanna work. I know it's easy for me to talk about all this, how great I am, whatever. But if you give me the opportunity, I will prove to you that I'm the right, you've made the right decision. Yeah. So I hope that you do that and you will allow me to prove you that this is what I really want. This mm -hmm. is the department. I've never applied anywhere else three times. But if not, I'll be back the fourth time. I'm coming back till I get hired. That's how I kind of said it, right? Right. <clears throat> and I, I, I remember vividly the head commissioner, she was female, she like smiled mm -hmm. and they said nothing. And then I turned back around and I left, <laughs> right? I just left. Mm -hmm. And then the recruiter calls me, the investigator, the, uh, by the way, 777 people applied and mm. went through the application process. Wow. And the recruiter called me. He's like, hey, 41 people made the list. Like, hey, 41 people made the list. You're, what's your name? You're Kaya, right? I'm like, yep. He's like, let me check. Do, 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 do. And you are number 41 out of 41. Mm, wow. <laughs> and But they're only hiring 15. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you that's gotta, it. Yep. So you, you, you made the first cut. Now you gotta make the second cut. Yeah. They're hiring yeah. 15. And I was like, oh man. And at that time I had a girlfriend with me and I was like, oh man, got it internally. Right. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Well, so that means I, my shot, I, it's, it's SO, I'm SOL, right? Yeah. He's like, no. I was like, what do you mean? You guys are hiring 15 people and I am number 41 out of 41. He's like, yeah, dude, I mean, there's so many other steps to go still. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, but he's like, hey, don't lose the faith. That's what he said. Then he invited me, scheduled me for a pre-polygraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you go in, you literally talk about every private thing about you on mm -hmm. a hundreds of questions, whatever. And I remember I told my ex that I'm not, I'm not going. Oh, yeah, it's just, I was like, because yeah. it was just like two and a half hours away from where we lived. Yeah. And she's like, just go, whatever. I go in, long story short, go through the polygraph, get all, everything. And they tell me, hey, by the time I get the psychological examination, there are like 19 people left in the process. And they still have to go through psych and background. Mm -hmm. And then only 11 of us make it out of 777. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. I just get sworn in. And I remember I like, crossed because we do a fit, fit test i finished my mile and a half run as soon as i crossed the finish line i didn't stop i just went straight to my bag grabbed my phone called my dad it's like dad i just became a cop oh man that's cool <laughs> that dude. was it that was it that was my proud moment in in, in the u.s like first 
Yeah, like yeah. that's like this nice. is something that you wanted. You came oh. to America and you you achieved that goal and that dream of yours. Yeah. So it's a very very big deal. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's great, man. So yeah, I thanks, mean, man. yeah, dude. Yeah. And you know, we're heck, that's only the beginning of your story, right? Because you've done you've done a couple of other things with a three letter agency as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah do, you was, want, do you want to talk about that some? Yeah, that was the uh, beginning. So. I became a police officer there mm -hmm. and I worked there right about six years. Yeah. Right? Very violent town. Loved it. I saw, and I really did like guys, some people like outside, they're like, Oh my God, that city's so violent. But when you're in it, mm -hmm. okay. I, I wanted to work the most violent part of that city. Like I wanted to be in that fight. Like, and you like work with, you wanted to be, yeah, I wanted yeah, to be yeah, in it and yeah. you work with, people like-minded people like you like men and women that's why i love the job because here you are you know you're going to get out there there's just like shooting at cops there's like just crazy like very violent environments and you're like i want to be in it oh what's which one is the busiest shift the afternoons sarge put me on afternoons <laughs> mm -hmm. like and you worked yeah. around like with those people people who were just fighting to get bid for uh, those shifts, right? Those uh, areas, the beats, patrol beats. And I loved it. Just imagine, like, it's me, all three of us, right? And we want to be in that yeah. Well, I want to work with you, you know? We yeah, want right. to get out there and just fight that together. So yeah. uh, it was never, it, do you know which one was the uh, worst? We had a beat 10 called it. That was like the farthest east part of the town. Nothing happened there. Quiet go drink coffee, hang out, play Angry Birds or whatever, right? <laughs> Write some tickets. Nobody, almost nobody wanted to work there. It was boring. Boring and you're yeah. out there. Cause sometimes I'd get forced there mm. cause I'd, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have enough seniority. Yeah. And I'd be listening to the radio, whole traffic, oh, he's running, shot fired. They, they just say these things and I'm just sitting five miles, whatever, away from them. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna just put that thing in drive and just leave my beat. Yeah, I want to get there. Like it was that. That was a feeling. Yeah, that. especially when you hear that, and you got to think. You know, especially if it's one of your buddies responding something like that, you want to be there for them as well. You know. Oh and yeah, so, dude. So yeah, I, I can only imagine. You know, like you know, yep. you, you get that and get that in your head. Now, also, is this Chicago? Where was this? Yeah, this is uh, Rockford, Illinois, okay. police department. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so just uh, outside of Chicago, maybe hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, worked there for about six years and did a saw some stuff there. Um, so which, you know, very, I, I got a lot of experience from there, yeah. right? And uh, work with awesome people, seriously, um, very good people, good, good detectives over there too. Um, and then I worked also as a uh, field training officer where I trained um, some of the uh, newer guys coming on board. And while I was a Rockford police officer, I wanted to work for a specific three letter agency, Okay, <laughs> right? Now, 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 based off of what three-letter agency this is, I'm going to judge you really hard. I hope you know that. Probably. <laughs> I, I know. I, I get it. Um, I understand. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I only have, by the way, at that time, Rock PD only required high school degree. Oh, okay. Right? When, I, when mm -hmm. I was getting in, right? Yeah. I think they're at least associates or bachelor's, associates degree right now, mm -hmm. I think. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but I was like, I got to get my, uh, I have to have a college degree, four-year bachelor's degree, right? Mm -hmm. Here I am, a full-time police officer. I was like, you know what, that's it. I pulled the trigger. I signed up uh, to a university, a college, out in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. And I got a little bit, some credits from police academy that right. I went through. Uh, it was like oh, three months and then plus almost two months in-house, like five months. Mm -hmm. And here I am. I Not only full-time student, I accelerated that. I was getting like 12 to 15 credits a semester. Mm -hmm. That's a lot, man. Oh, yeah. I was just like, he, this was my life. I worked 2 p.m., I'm sorry, uh, 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. That was my shift. And I lived about 30 minutes away from the PD. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, that's, so I would come home at 2 a, like 2.30-ish, 2.45 a.m. in full uniform. As soon as I walked in, I wouldn't even take my uniform off. I'd sit on my computer. I'd do homework till 5, 5.30. In Jeez. the morning, yeah, right, mm -hmm. and then from there, take my uniform off, go to bed, sleep. I'd wake up at like nine thirty or ten, sometimes ten thirty. As soon as I'd wake up, this is seriously every day. As soon as I'd wake up, 
I'd go straight to my kitchen and I'd make some eggs and oatmeal. As my eggs are cooking, I'd just go to the bathroom, take care of business, come right back. And I, I wouldn't even sit in the living room. I would eat as I'm standing, get my protein shake done, and I would drive to the gym, which is another 30 minutes away. Mm -hmm. I'd work out for an hour and come back home. As I'm back home, I'd throw some chicken, whatever, so I could make my meal plan. I'd like to stay fit. I like to work out. Mm -hmm. I believe if you choose law enforcement, you definitely lose the right to be unfit. Mm -hmm. I wish every cop listened to that. Yeah, but um, so I did, I would uh, cook my meals. Mm -hmm. And as my meals were cooking, I would just jump in the shower, clean up, and put my uniform on, come back, and eat something while I'm standing. Seriously, like my living room, unless I was off, I, I wouldn't use my living room. Yeah. And get my uh, lunch bag ready. I look at it, I was like, crap, I'm late to work. Like it was that cramped. And I would just get in my car, go to work. At work, if I had downtime, pop, I would bring my laptop with me. I'd pop the laptop, I'd do some homework. That's That was my life, right? And I did that for, I don't know, two, two years, ish to three years two and a half something like that i got my bachelor's degree and right before i got my bachelor's degree i had worked with a lot of troopers right uh, a lot like we worked out together whatever i know katie's laughing at me right now <laughs> <laughs> troopers yeah, just just, uh, just those uh, who are listening uh when i first did a collaboration with uh, classic <laughs> firearms she knew nothing about me and she said you got that trooper vibe yep <laughs> what does that even mean well she's married to a city cop you know i so, know so you know there's that little bit of uh yeah, yeah i was like what can you can you just tell us that what, what, what did you mean by the trooper vibe i don't know just the way you carry yourself just kind of like the whole like cocky trooper vibe i mean every i mean just you when you think of a trooper like it's just boom kaya <laughs> <laughs> You mean the super trooper, right? Yeah, uh, super like. trooper. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I guess I'm uh, cocky. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, it's just like the way you like the way you handle yourself, and I don't know. It's just your. Well, whole you come off confident. Well, you come it's off just. I mean, it's like it's like you know how you can identify. So you know, we get told as military guys, you can identify military. Right? Yeah, yeah. The way they the way they carry themselves and the way they act like douchebags when they're in a group together. Yeah. You know, right? And uh, so that it's just like sounds like a frat to me. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> with guns. All right, that's right. <laughs> exactly. And, better and better uniforms. Upgraded. Um. Uh, and <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great but first. but no, I, I understand where she's coming from, and it's like, but you know, like the, the, it is the way you carry yourself and everything. Yeah. And you're like, okay, you know what? This dude has a professional demeanor. Yeah. He's confident. Uh, he obviously cares about physical fitness. He must do something in that realm, right? Gotcha. So that's well. you know to to more be more complimentary instead okay. of judgy. Okay. Uh, that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> Is that how you feel too, or just Clint just said what he's thinking? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's just like Very you, honest. the way you move and things like you just can tell that you've been through the trooper, the I whole like trooper. Gotcha. Okay. I, know, I will take that. I'm just telling as you, as I've, I've spent enough time with enough troopers that like after you come through like trooper school, like you just become a different version well, of yourself. Well, just like the Marines. Yeah. We're the best, right? Whatever. Like that's what you get you know, beaten into you. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you're absolutely. the best. Dude. Okay. Well, I'll get to it. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I was going to say something that was going to jump forward, but I hung out with a lot of troopers. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're like, you know what? You should be a trooper. And honestly, Illinois State Police at that time still is very elite. But, I mean, things are changing, man. I'm sorry. They're mm -hmm. just changing. It's not the same. But at that time, like, it was much harder to get in. Thousands of people apply. Certain people get in. I applied uh, and went through their process as I was uh, a police officer at Rockford. And I got in. Shipped out to Springfield, Illinois for uh, six months, as I told you, like some mimicking Marine Corps style, whatever. Yeah, you and I had a conversation about it, and it was like, okay, wait a minute. How did you fold your beds? You had the hospital corners? How did you have your uniform stacked up? How did you have inspections? How, did you have drill? You did, you did that too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, no, you guys. And then you like had the rule by, like the play-by-play the -play of like the Marine Corps boot camp, you know? It's I thought that was insane. pretty funny. Yeah. Look, I, I can understand the whole paramilitary discipline thing, but I was not expecting because I'm not, I've never been in the military, mm -hmm. right? The Marines in my class, I was asking them, like, I mean, army guys too. I, my bunkmate was an army, uh, mm -hmm. a four-year active, well, he had gotten out 
honorably honorable discharge let's just say he i asked him about the hey man like it was week two i remember i was like man what the hell is this because they were hitting us really hard yeah. right really hard i was like what is this thing like is this how it is because i had no reference point right mm -hmm. he's like this is like the worst 100 times worse than the army boot camp that's yeah. what he said i oh, said 100 well. times yeah it's like yeah and then i remember there's this uh, uh cadet his name is joel har i'll never forget him joe if you're listening i miss you <laughs> but uh, <laughs> joe was like just on his bunk just laying down you can just clearly tell joe was squared away everybody's struggling joe was just like kick him back it's nonchalant yeah it's like not another day. yeah just another yep. day yeah joe you know he's marine right i was like joe what is this you know he's like yeah this sucks and i'm not coming <laughs> back after this weekend just like oh, that okay i was like what he's like yeah i'm not coming back i was like what dude you can't why not you gotta stick it out he's like i'm not doing another marine corps boot camp that's exactly what he said i was like okay so i'm at the urinal with cadet stanley he's still a trooper stanley if you're listening how's it going buddy but uh stanley's our class president and i'm like hey stanley you're a marine he's like yeah i was like how is this compared to the marine corps boot camp or whatever military boot camp i had never mm -hmm. been he's like yeah if they continue this, this is the Marine Corps boot camp right here, just twice as long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's three six months. months versus six. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. I was like, oh, God. But um, so finished that. Six months go by. Finished that. Became a trooper and worked in the Chicagoland area and um, enjoyed it. Honestly loved it. Um, yeah, we had that uh, trooper hat, the cover. That oh, we, I've just, seen it. It's oh, like, yeah, the OD like, green I've pants and a tan it. shirt. Yeah, nope. we got yeah. the, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just Montana like the drone instructor hat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And uh, worked the road a little bit and did, did a good job, I guess. You know, they promoted me. I got I got reassigned, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to investigations, and I did. I was a crime scene investigator there. Nice. Now, when I was a road trooper, I applied to a specific three-letter agency that I had my sights set on, mm -hmm. but just was waiting for the right time. Yeah. Right. You got, I, it just, it, when I was in the uh, local police force, I didn't have the college degree and it just wasn't the right time, right? Okay. So, and right when I got my college degree, I got the state police gig, so it wasn't the right time to apply, right? So when I was on the road, I applied and I got rejected. Mm -hmm. Now, where did I get rejected? The written test. Uh, and, and those who are listening, yeah, I apply it to the FBI yeah. as a special agent. Okay, cool. So, you know, that's not as bad as, I, you know. Okay. okay. <laughs> that's good. Not not the other. Not the. Not, not ATF. Yeah, they, they no. yeah, yeah, no, they, yeah, they, I'll, I'll, I'll hold yeah, let's, let's, Sounds let's, good. back to your story, Kyle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I applied to the FBI and um, always wanted to be, and you know, it's, they seemed super premier elite. Uh, law enforcement and um why are you laughing katie i <laughs> know uh, i yeah well i mean it, it makes sense for you though because it seems like everything that you've kind of gone after is you've always wanted to be part of the best right you wanted you wanted yeah. to keep going for yeah that. and so it, may, it makes sense if you're going to be in investigations well who is the premier and solid choice for investigations how about the federal bureau of investigations right yeah so it makes sense for you yeah yep and uh applied for it and their first i might you take the uh written test right mm -hmm. And not that I didn't take it seriously. I thought I had what it takes to take a an investigator related written test. I just I I felt like I was mm. that's when I no. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. I, I sucked, right? I sat down. The questions were very long and yeah. they gave you very limited times. So I was able to answer them confidently. Like I was confident with my answers but I ran out of time so quick when mm -hmm. I still had like six giant questions left. Yeah. I just had to click through them. That was a fail. Oh. And then they give you one more chance for life. Really? Yeah, you, can't, you don't get to keep applying, right? You only wow. get to apply to the FBI twice. I didn't know that. Jeez. Yeah, twice. So no they pressure get, that second time around, right? No, uh, exactly, no yeah. exactly. <laughs> and you get your score instantly too. Oh, wow. When you take, okay. yeah, you just hit submit and it's the computer just sends you an email. Congrats or get out of here, right? Mm. So, I this time I was like, oh crap, okay, I need to really study this. Like there was a lot of IQ tests, figural reasoning, and all kinds of like psychological bunch of stuff, right? And I went in and I bought a bunch of test prep stuff online. Like I spent some money, and uh, I just 
try to take any mock test out there, including LSAT and whatever. Like, mm-hmm. just took a bunch of stuff. And I waited over six months, I think. They gave me three months. Normally, it's six months. I guess I, I was prior law enforcement. They gave me three. I don't know. But they said three months. You have three months. What? Well, three months later, you can reapply for your last chance. After six months, I applied. I was able to get through their, uh, I passed it, get through their uh, rigorous application process. Mm-hmm. I finally got that call. Man, it was just, it was, that was a long process, man. But I got the call. I did get the call um, saying that, hey, we'd like to offer you the uh, position of a special agent. And I, and I was just like blown away. I was like, wait, I'll never forget the moment. I was like, wow. Like, I wasn't even excited. Not like I didn't know how to feel, right? Right. I just went to a cigar shop and sat down and just smoked the cigar. <laughs> That's literally what I did. Yay me. <laughs> yep. I just, I just left the gym. Right. I was in my gym clothes. Yeah. Like sweaty, whatever. I went to a cigar shop, grabbed coffee, and sat down all by myself, just smoked a cigar, and just drank coffee. Like, I didn't know. I, I had the process. I was like, is this How really happening? How old were you at the time? Um, pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. 85 or something? Mm-hmm. Cigars there. and coffee? Like, I know, right? <laughs> What's, no. I love cigars and coffee. I love it, too. Yeah. Cigars and coffee is great. We yeah. should do that today. Oh, I'm down. Uh, yeah. So I... I um, then, uh, of course, next thing you know, I uh, was slotted to a class that was just coming up in just a month and a half. Yeah. I went to, st- I gave my resignation to state police. I said, hey, this is what's happening. Pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. And I ship out to Quantico. I uh, go through a pretty awesome uh, training, finish Quantico, and successfully, uh, Director uh, Chris Ray. Hands me my creds and badge, and that's and I got hopped on a plane and I flew to Seattle. I was assigned to Seattle, and uh, it was just fantastic, man. I I was a special agent of the FBI. It was an amazing thing, like uh, feeling wise, of course. Um, it's a great organization, right? But um, so I went to Seattle. I wasn't happy about Seattle. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, I just it's, it's too far away. I wanted to go to Chicago. So anyways, I worked as a special agent and I, they assigned me to counterintelligence division. So I did uh, C- uh, counterintelligence, like U.S. National Security Matters investigations. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, worked there a little bit and uh, also uh, became a firearm instructor. So I uh, was doing well, right? I mean, I like shooting guns and I was doing just fine. So, so what was your experience with firearms at that point? Uh, law enforcement. Like I was... Yeah. Okay, gotcha. But just I trained myself a lot. Like I was not... Uh, like I did a lot of tactical training. Yeah. I did, took separate classes and I did a lot of a uh, bunch of training. I trained myself mm-hmm. and I also did a lot of martial arts kind of type training, just enough to take care of myself because I, a lot mm-hmm. of people, I work for Rockford, man, people and state police, people, they're bad people out there. You're by right. yourself and you really like, I've learned one thing, you call for backup, they will get there, but it, it, things happen so quick. Oh yeah. Oh, like yeah. there's been some incidents in Rockford where if I, did not stay if I wasn't fit and I didn't have some uh, jiu-jitsu and a little bit of a boxing uh, background. Not, not. I don't even want to say background. I don't want to disrespect those people who yeah, have just, background. Just a little, just bit, a little bit of a training, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would. I would have been dead. Wow. Yeah. Like I remember a specific incident where a guy attacked me. And said, "You're gonna die today." And it was a one-on-one brawl. I couldn't get to my gun. I couldn't get to my radio. Nothing. And he wasn't. He was punching me, and he wasn't running away. That was a weird feeling. Oh right. shit! I was being attacked by a predator. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. It's not a couple of guys fighting at a bar. This, mm-hmm. this is a different thing. Yeah. Somebody is trying to kill you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's for a fight for life. And yes, I took a lot of blows, broke my nose and all that stuff. But I won that fight. Yeah. Because I, what well, mindset is everything. Oh, absolutely. I, I know I'm going back, but I swear, whoever's listening, this applies very well to firearms. Everything mindset is more important than anything Mm -hmm. when that guy attacked me right i will never forget the feeling i had at that point like forget being fit forget me i was like oh not today oh you just made a big mistake i swear that's all i was thinking see and that's that's something that's big right there because some people think 
oh god how do i get away no nope. the fight or flight and yep. you and you chose fight and you're probably here still here because of it yep i swear yeah. like as i think about it the neck and the, and the, the hairs in the back of my neck just stands up like <laughs> i was like like you have you know, you've messed up like mm -hmm. you're not gonna walk away from this like it was yeah. there was no way i was gonna lose that fight mentally like i i, I turned into something i i'd never seen in myself yeah right so and i won the fight and yeah, I walked away from it. So uh, here I am, right? So um, I like to uh, stay in shape and do some jujitsu, a little boxing thing. Honestly, this whole boxing thing, what it taught me, not necessarily throw punches, learn the feeling of getting punched in the face. Yeah. And that was a big deal for me because I got punched in the face many times by that guy <laughs> yeah. during that fight. Mm -hmm. And I was used to it. My brain knew that feeling. It, it was, it And it didn't catch you by surprise. It didn't send you into shock. Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember, like, it was just everything slow motion, right? But he punched me right in the nose, right? And as soon as he punched me, I think I just punched him right back. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a like very, very quick thing. Mm -hmm. And this is on video, by the way. I'll show you the video after. Oh, we, yeah. sweet. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, he was at a bus station. There's a CCTV. Um, <clears throat> so I did all that. So my experience with firearms was local and uh, state police yep. but also a lot of training on my own thousands of thousands i'd invest in myself i'd buy out of my pocket and i do some firearm competition among law enforcement not not um, the civilian nice. stuff That's yeah. Cool. yeah just to be proficient and i was very interested in that stuff too and naturally having that type a personality too i wanted to be better and better and better so i i was uh i'd say i was better than the average uh police officer out there yeah well i mean it's you know you what you took a sense of pride into it and you figured yeah. too this is your job this is yeah. not just beyond now it's going beyond your job at, at some points in your life it became your life yeah you know and you're like okay cool well if i want to go home and still be okay and you know live to fight another type of day uh i should probably be physically fit i should probably know a little bit of hand-to-hand -hand or martial arts i should probably be proficient with my firearm instead of just thinking i've got a gun i'm i'm good you know, yep. and, it's, th and that, that comes down to concealing it or just can carrying a firearm as well. Absolutely. It, mm -hmm. it, it really is. I mean, you, like you owe that to it, if you don't care about yourself. I'm sorry. You owe that to your family, yeah. your loved ones. You owe it to those citizens that you took an oath mm -hmm. to protect. As I say, a society and, and, alone. And, yeah. and also your partners, man. If you and I are going to a domestic, they're not sending me alone, right? Mm -hmm. Now, 44, 45 domestic. Mm -hmm. I trust you with my life yeah. and you trust me. Well, there's that responsibility mm -hmm. of also trying to protect each other too. We got to back each other up. Mm -hmm. So if you're a piece of shit, right. you don't care, then then you're, you're slapping me yeah, in the face, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. Cause I'm, t I'm going to be yeah. honest with you. Uh, some of my colleagues, uh, whether I work with or not, doesn't matter. They'll, they'll relate to this. You get call, you get a call, and your backup is assigned, you're like, oh, God. Mm. You, you either call the dispatch, maybe in your, you have that relationship with, or like type on the MDC, right? Yeah. Yep. MDT, and you're like, mm -hmm. hey, uh, can you uh, send another unit too? Just one more. Hey, can you send 34 over this way too? Yep. Whatever. Just keep it between us. Whatever, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. 34, are you in the area? Can you just go help them out? That, dude, that happens. Why? Because that backup that you were assigned if you go alone, you're going to do better. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there are police officers out there like that. If you're listening, listen, I'm not here to attack. I, I promise I'm not saying this to attack. You owe it to your partners. Mm -hmm. You owe it to those people. You yep. owe it to your family, your loved ones. If you don't care about yourself, mm -hmm. do something about training. Do something about bettering okay. yourself. So. I know that all too well. Hunter, Hunter um, yeah. well, you mean you, you and... Hunter, Hunter. Very, 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 <laughs> we are very close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, Hunter, actually, them in the the county that he works with. So like, he's the only one on duty in his town, and then they have like the county, but they've set it up where all of the guys that are in that trust each other nope. have set it up where they're the ones working on the same shift at the same time. There you go. Like they they had like an entire like countywide thing, and it's just like. This is who I trust. This is who I want as my backup. This is who's working east side, you know, closest to this or closest to that. And if the rotation changes, everyone's right. Like if the county's <laughs> rotation changes, the city's rotation changes. Gotcha. Because that's I, just the way it is. I understand them. I understand them very much. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I know it's sad, but it is what it is. But uh, 
so firearm ex experience uh, is is that's what I had. And uh, when I was in the bureau, and quite honestly, I'm gonna be honest, like when I was in Quantico, I became a much better shot than I was before. I, I was decent, and I'm still not the best, of course, but I do all right, and uh, I got better. Uh, there were some those those instructors in Quantico were uh, fantastic, at least the ones uh, the ones that I had in my bay. Uh, so, and from there, I was able to shoot decent, right? And when I was at my field office um, during firearms training, I'd do well in our primary, you know, the PFI. Our uh, firearm uh, PFI was like, hey, you know, you should try to be uh, one of our firearm instructors. I'd love to, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I did, they put you through a little bullseye competition. I was able to do well there and they selected me shipped me out to, at that time it was LA, Orange County area, and uh, um, mainly, yeah, mainly SWAT guys. I think it was only two or three of us were not SWAT, the rest of them were SWAT guys. They're all becoming firearm instructors for the Bureau, agents, right? We're all agents. And uh, I was able to uh, go through that course successfully and uh, became a uh, FBI firearm instructor. And uh, yeah, shortly after that, actually, uh, in the bureau, I left. I a few months after resigned. Um, don't want to get into details, but I was treated unfairly. And anybody mm -hmm. who's listening, anybody who knows the deal, they know how mm -hmm. terribly unfairly I was treated there, where I basically had to leave a career that I really worked so hard to get in, like just very, very unfairly. And very yeah. shortly after that, that uh, unfair treatment was acknowledged by those people. Um, you know, sometimes it happens like that. It's, you know what, the, and I would, someday maybe I'll talk about it in details, but I, uh, um, I still have, I'm doing something about it in the background. Yeah. So okay. I don't want uh, to uh, talk fully about it, but it was just very unfair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, very, very unfortunate. And uh, while I was still there, uh, while I was going through that stuff, uh, I was talking to my brother, right? So that's the end of like, uh, while well, I was still there, a few months after that I left, whatever. I was talking to my brother. My brother was like, uh, he's an actually, like his job is an, on, he's an online gamer. Oh really? He does that <laughs> yeah. for a living, right? Yeah. And he gets paid pretty good, right? Yeah. He'd be so surprised. Is, is, that, is that who got you into a Call of Duty and everything? And He did. Yeah. So yeah. We're, well, playing, actually, we're playing later, right? Playing he did, weekend? he did kind <laughs> of, but uh, in reality, uh, a lot of, um, guys in the agency, uh, the other three letter, letter, letter agency that I work with, National mm -hmm. Security Matters, um, um, those guys and I play, like a couple of guys in the bureau and some guys in the agency, uh, CIA, right guys? Yeah. Those guys, uh, we were friends, yeah. We uh, uh, would get online after work and mm -hmm. just play. Yeah. Great guys, I swear, those guys at the agency and uh, the ones that I work with, and I played games that whatever, every single one of them just awesome guys, really cool guys. Um, yeah, anyways. I, I'm just imagining though now, somebody, yeah. somebody's you know talking some mad shit to you guys, whatever, and you're like, okay, you got CIA agents and an FBI agent over here. Let me pull up your address real quick, kid. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, yeah. I actually am gonna be your stepdad, so hold on. All right. <laughs> you know about the stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> Got a hit out on me. <laughs> yes, oh give about God. ten minutes. I'll be right over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, do you want to? You want to tell that story? Room. Do you want to tell that story really quick? Well, when I was a, okay, I, I can't. I mean, <laughs> maybe not as a sorry guy. <laughs> just right, you know what we'll, say, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll save that for another time. But just another time. Just, just, just imagine. It's a funny just story. Imagine. Way back <laughs> when story. I was a newer police officer. Um, um, <laughs> but yeah, a my brother was online gamer. He's like, hey, why don't you just like, uh, why don't you do something like that? I was like, what, play games? He's like, no, I'm thinking like you, there's not a guy like you in Turkey. That's what he's like. Mm. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, with all the experience you have and you went there and you did all that, like you should tell your, tell some stories, you know, like all those stories that you had when you were a police officer mm -hmm. and stuff. People liked stuff like that. I was like, nah. He wanted me to create a YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, I see. And he wanted me to just tell some, hey, this one time we went mm. there, whatever, kind of tell stories and yeah. stuff. Or just like do some educational stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't have time for that. Like, I don't want to deal with it. And you would occasionally 
say, do it, do it, do it. And when I was in the bureau, me and my partner at the time, actually, he literally called me this morning. I have to call him back. Uh, we were going to do a YouTube channel, two agents, yeah. <laughs> YouTube channel. I got it approved by the headquarters. Really? Believe it or not. We were just not going to say that we were agents or anything like that. We were going to shoot at things like the way you do, like shoot at ballistic helmets and yeah. just to have fun. Blows right. things up. He had this huge property, right, in Washington State. And we were going to do that. Obviously, that didn't happen. Yeah. I left. Uh, well, I, I would have happened if I lived there. We're still very close yeah. with them, right? Yeah. I uh, moved. Um, I said, well, I like doing that stuff. He's like, you can even do that. So I was like, you know what? Let me do it. Why not? So I created this YouTube channel. I started mm -hmm. telling these stories, whatever. Next thing you know, that took off. Uh, did well. And from there, a, my Sorry USA chapter <laughs> begins, right? Like it was like literally right after, like the timing couldn't be more perfect. Yeah. I resigned from the bureau. I left the bureau. And next thing you know, Sorry USA came to the picture. Just like, it was it insane merged. how it worked. Yeah, it was yeah. insane how it merged. Yeah, because I was going to ask, I was like, so how did you get involved with uh, Sorry USA? And well, here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it flows perfectly, right? <laughs> I um, I was uh, I got contacted by my counterpart from Turkey, the headquarters or the, the factory. Let's just say, he's a pr pretty well known actor in uh, Turkey. He does a lot of action stuff. He uh, messaged me on Instagram. I guess I made some comments about one of some of his movies. I didn't know him. Like mm -hmm. people ask me about tactical questions over there. Like, hey, what do you think about the tactics on this? What do you think about this? Is this realistic or mm -hmm. legit or not? And I was like, oh, yeah, that looks legit. Yeah, whoever that guy is, I mean, he's definitely trained himself or he's trained. He knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Kind of you know, complimented the guy, right? Yeah. I knew nothing about him. I mean, to me, it was him. I didn't know him. Even I didn't even know he was a famous actor. Like, that's how <laughs> oh, wow. little yeah. I knew about Turkey. Like, I still, yeah. to this day, I don't know much about Turkey, right? Because I'm so separated. And he, he messaged me on Instagram. Hey, thanks a lot for, uh, you know kind words and this and that because people on there take me like they actually do listen to me when I say certain things they, they take that as a face value for the most part and I say hey this is my opinion it's, there's many ways to do it whatever right. and um, so we became friends he invited me to Sars and Loss he had talked to Sars and Loss they gave the green light and so I went to Turkey yeah Istanbul Turkey and I go to Sar Smalls factory, the state of the art. I mean, it's insanely big and very well protected. Like I was entering into some military facility, like very well controlled, awesome, very professional. Um, I was not expecting it. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I knew I was going to be going to this, this huge factory or whatever, but I wasn't expecting how awesome it was. Yeah. Right. Like right at the entrance is like a, I don't know, Rolls Royce, a Mustang, like all kinds of stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. In, in the huge lobby area, right? Mm. Very large factory. And they had this whole production crew. Like they're gonna film and everything. And next thing I, I know, we're gonna be shooting their guns and we're gonna have fun. Me and my counterpart, we're just gonna run and gun, have a good time. Mm -hmm. I was their special guest. They were doing a special guest segment for Sars Ma's video. That's when I first saw SAR SAR products. Yeah. In my life, in person, I'd never fired one. First, we started with pistols, SAR 9s, right? And like, I know I'm with the company now. A lot of people just say, oh, you know what? Well, you're biased. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. But I wasn't at that time. That was the first time I handled a SAR 9. I was just nailing it. I was impressed with how those guns were, the <clears throat> how flat shooting they were. They worked and felt great in the hands. And I was very accurate with it. I was so accurate with it and I hadn't fired guns like for five months at that time yeah whatever like it was a long time so you know how perishable it is right oh yeah I, I do just, yeah we go all the way up to 35 yards he ch kept making me go back and back and back and I'll give that video to Ryan Ryan can do maybe put that on the screen or something but even 35 yards I was just firing it at relatively fast rate um, and I was just like bang, 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 right on that target. And I was just very impressed. And then we moved on to their fully automatic rifles and all military stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Just had a blast. And then uh, from there, I was introduced to the president of SAR USA. 
awesome guy. But listen, I'm not just saying because I work for him. He is, you know, a powerful man, right? Just down to earth, super humble, awesome guy. When I met him, just great guy, right? We, him and I uh, had coffee with my counterpart. We talked and next thing I know, I was asked to be the face of the company. Oh, wow. He's like, would you like to be the face of Sorry USA kind of thing? And what is it? What are the things that you can do bring to the table? Right. Mm -hmm. So of course I had to give him a sales pitch on my end. I, I did a full blown PowerPoint presentation for him, the things that I could do for him. Right. All right. Careful. Now don't say too much. Cause I didn't do that for, for this job. Right? No, no, it's okay. Uh, We're looking for his replacement. I can prepare one for this one too. <laughs> <laughs> I want your job, dude. Hey, <laughs> Hey, you better watch out. Cause Kai has been setting his mind on things and he's been getting them. So well, I, I, I have been looking for a, uh, for another counterpart. I can say that. Good. So. All right. Cross. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about I'll, this later. All right. So Katie, I'm sorry. We're really getting rid of client. It's fine. That's the he door. just doesn't know it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah. We started yeah. this podcast because we're getting rid of me. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway. Wow. Okay, I'll let you guys sort that out and I'll uh, continue on this. But no, it's, um, that's how it ended. Like I pr presented the uh, PowerPoint presentation and I came up with like a short-term and long-term plans and all that stuff, right? And apparently he liked it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, he offered me the job. I was honored by it. It's, uh, listen, I sincerely mean this. If I did not like the product, I would not do this job. Oh, yeah. I just wouldn't put my name behind it. Loved it, and which we're going to get to it, uh, why this product is actually really good. And uh, I began uh, working for SAR, and uh, here I am, guys. This is a story in a very, very, very compressed version. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this no, is my dude, story. It, no, well, it's, it's an incredible story, though, because what you have done is you've lived, you know, that what we've all heard, uh, the American dream, right? Yeah, I mean, it's you, real, guys. Yeah. It, it's real. If you're, if you're willing to work for it, the American dream is as alive as we are right here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this is, you know, I mean, I think it's an incredible story. You came here, you set your mind to some goals, and you, you attacked those goals, and you, you got them, you know, and I think that's super cool. So. It really is an amazing, like, this country, like, yeah. people... It's an amazing country. Like yeah. uh, there are things I've done here that I'm not sure if I could have ever dreamed of doing right in my life anywhere else in the world. Okay. Um, it's a beautiful country. Um, great people. You can be whoever you want to be here, man. You just mm -hmm. got to set, put your mind to it. Right. It's, yeah. No, I think that's, yeah, I think that's absolutely incredible. So, um, uh, but yeah, so let's hop into the actual product though, because what I've got sitting on my on the table right here in front of us is the uh, SAR 9CX. Why and is that? I'm just so curious. Why is that gun here? All right, so the video should be out by now, uh, but uh, yesterday uh, we played a game of uh, tactical horse. All right, so we played uh, H O R S E horse, and um, with firearms. We didn't play it correctly. We didn't play it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It wasn't like the most it like <laughs> rule followed. Time. It was yeah. still a lot of fun, and we wanted to, you know, we just wanted to spice it up and make something a little bit different because, you know, something that we get asked on social media too is like, hey, I want to take a friend to the range. What do you think we should do? What's a good training tactic? What's this? What's that? And it's like, compete against each other, but in like obviously a safe way. Fun do, way. Yeah, make it fun. You know, uh, you can make it low round count like we did until it turned into a, like an hour long game. Oh god. <laughs> Um, uh, Katie wasn't missing. I wasn't missing. And then it just got to the point where it's like, okay, we got to finish this. <laughs> yep. And, um, but, uh, and, and you were doing fine. Um, Dude, uh, just, listen, don't let Clint talk crap. You and I were smoking him until like the last five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had to, I had to make it interesting, you know, <laughs> that's right. So no, did no, actually, uh, no, actually I, w I was struggling at the beginning Yeah. and, uh, I was running my beloved formally. Uh, no, <laughs> no, my, my, my SIG P320 VTAC that I have right here in front of me right now. I love this gun. I think it shoots great. I've been shooting great with it. And I knew that I was hitting a little to the, uh, little to the left with it. Uh, so I adjusted my red dot and I think I screwed myself because I think I over adjusted and then I couldn't figure out where I was. And I was just dropping super simple shots. And I was like, okay, you know what? Run with the irons. And then, you know, I, I always say it. You know, I need to practice what I preach. You know, run your irons, learn your irons, because that red dot might not work for you one day. Yep. And guess what? It didn't work for me. 
and uh, and I started running my irons, and then I started to just kind of like rely on these nice big glowing iron sights, and I was like, okay, I've got this, dude. I'm gonna pop. Oh, that didn't go ding. I saw dust. I missed. H O R. That came you got, really really quick. You got to an S, right? You yeah. got to an H R S. Yeah, a, a little bit later. The e, yeah, a little bit later. Uh, and then finally, you were like, dude, just at this point, you're gonna lose. So just grab the SAR and see what see how you run with it. And so I picked up this. OD green. Uh, what, what color is this one? It's a, yeah, OD green. Yeah, I didn't know mm -hmm. if you guys had a specific Yeah, OD green. Okay. Oh, well, that makes sense. Uh, so I picked up the SAR 9C X and I was like, all right. What is this? Like almost half the price. Simple white dot sights. Good trigger though. Feels good. All right, fine. What do I have to lose? Came back and freaking won. I could, so I mean, Here's the thing, though. When I started making these, like, because uh, Katie started doing, like, different types of shooting positions. And she was running the uh, Aero Precision EPC-9, mm -hmm. uh, which ran really good for you. Um, yeah. I think I think we had, like, a couple of things that were, that you know, were going wrong or something. I don't I don't know what it was, but, like, some light primer strikes or something. But I don't think that was, like, uh, detrimental. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, but once we oiled up, it seemed to be running pretty fine. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, but she had the EOTech on there and mm -hmm. was, I mean... Absolutely, she was jealous. killing it, man! Dude, oh my oh god. god! So if you yeah. guys haven't seen the video, go check the video out. Yeah, because uh, you know Katie was she was coming after us. I should have put the nail in the coffin before Clint switched guns, but I was trying to be nice and let him prolong and keep stay alive. Yeah, we we were both trying to be nice. Yeah, yeah don't nice you, you should not have let. Don't ever if you've got me down like that, you need to take advantage Clint, of it because you Clint, know how competitive Clint. I am. Yeah, I don't but like we to also lose. Know how sensitive your ego is. We yeah, couldn't have gotten you out that care. soon. I just oh, like, dude, I like that. <laughs> it would have been like, it would have been like the worst thing. Like, Clint well, would've like he would have gotten in his car and drove off while we were still at the range shooting. No, I would just, <laughs> I would have kept trying while you guys were trying to shoot. I've been like, no, I'm, I'm going to keep doing this. Well, if we're serious, yeah. like I'll be competitive and I will yeah. take it seriously and I yeah. won't talk to anybody. Yeah. If we're having fun, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I lost. All right, bye bye. Yeah, yeah but I think I, I tried not to show that I was actually getting pretty frustrated in video. I was like, well, I, this, these are easy shots. Why the hell am I missing these? And uh, I'm like, okay, Clint, you know what? Just like at the uh, uh, the Thunder Ranch video, go back to day one, get to those fundamentals. And the SAR 9 made me do that. I wasn't relying on the red dot. I wasn't relying on the fancy yeah. night sights and everything else. So I was like, okay, you know what? Focus on your sights. Focus on your your, your front sight slow steady squeeze and then the moment that i actually started practicing those fundamentals all of a sudden ding yep. ding oh 50 yard shot from left right barricade left barricade right 50 yards okay cool ding you got a target in front of you that you have to maneuver around and hit ding you know and then it's like okay what's up with this and um and it worked and then that uh the one that the one that you were impressed with yeah, I said point two seconds. Yeah, oh, that was dude, amazing. Dude. I, you know, I was like, okay, under two seconds, two shots on target at fifteen yards. I think is what it was. Well, was like, let's you know just what? let's just remind everybody. Yeah. Compressed. Yeah. Like smaller target than your regular. Oh yeah, oh, very yeah. small. Yeah, yeah, the targets targets, yeah, the TA targets. Yeah, the TA targets that we're small. using are the condensed C zone, so they are yeah. the reduced size targets. Yeah, condensed, not compressed. Right? Yeah. No, you're fine. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, there's yeah, they can be compressed. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but yeah, they're so there's there's smaller targets. You know, um. Uh, for, I'm trying to think of like a reference point for, you know, visualization for people. Almost that, like you know. a 10 by 12, but just a little longer, right? Yeah. The plate. I, actually, I don't, I don't even think it's 10 by 12. I mean, they're, they're, they're small, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, and so, yeah, I mean, Katie's railing it at freaking 50 yards. And then uh, at this 15 yard shot, I was like, you know what? This is how I know I'm going to get her. I, I might be a little bit quicker. Yeah. Might be, but she's also got the PCC and she's getting that third point of contact. Yeah. And she, I said under one and a half seconds. And she got you know, 1.4. No, you said under two. No, I said no, under two. No, he changed it later. Changed he it. said 1.5. And I was like, oh, no, that's like too fast, right? Yeah. And I then he did it. Yeah. And yeah. You know, from a low ready. And I was like, okay, from yeah. you know, low ready under one and a half seconds. Yeah. And I think it was like 1.29. And then Katie did it under, I 1. think, 1.4. We had 1.4. Yeah. And then we to hurry up the video. It's like, okay, you know what? From now on, if you don't beat me or I don't beat you, yeah. uh, then I have to lose a letter <laughs> or, you know. And so yeah. that's yeah. ultimately what got it. But uh, but no, I mean the the pistol performed so well, and it just really blew my mind. And I was like, okay, I need to pay them. So I'm I'm getting one. Um, because uh, I mean, yeah. like I said, I shot with it during you know the SAR nine C. I shot yep. with it during uh Arkansas carry loadout series. Katie shot with it a little bit there too. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt did also, and it impressed me then. You know, but we but I never like really like challenged myself or got to the point where I'm like. I need to rely on me and this gun to get through this. And then that simple game of horse made me realize, uh, it was humbling first of all. Yep. 
Uh, and secondly, it was, you know what, dude, I can do some serious work with this gun. I mean, heck, we were even shooting at 100 yards with it with just a white dot. Dude. Yeah. yeah, I just want to point out, you were shooting 100 yards before we started. You yeah. hit six out of eight. Yeah. Yeah, I, guys, I, 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 I was it. checking out towards the end <laughs> though, with the whole thing. But yeah. it's, listen, the gun, if you're, if, if you're a decent shot, that's a compact gun, right? Mm -hmm. Four-inch four, barrel. Four-inch barrel. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We were making... We're making those hundred yard shots together. Yeah. Yeah. The gun, how about this? If I was in law enforcement today, right? I would carry that as my sidearm all day long over my other known brands. And again, I'm not here to in any way talk crap about right, it. Right, yeah. They are awesome. You know, all these other guns, awesome guns. I would rely my life on them all day long. A lot of people do, but I'm just saying today, if I were to go back to law enforcement, mm -hmm. which no, but if I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, nothing against it. Love them. No. All my, most of my friends are still in there, but mm -hmm. it's just, I think I'm done. But uh, um, I would carry SR9, and I would tell my friends to do that too. Mm -hmm. So if I'm telling my friends, hey, this is an amazing gun, carry this, that says a lot. So this yeah. is beyond being biased, right? Again, the, the reason I work for the company is because of the pro how impressed I was with the cr product. Right. Yeah. I mean, hey, Clint, you have nothing... You have nothing invested in here. No. So you literally were so impressed with this gun because you you did so much better. Yeah. You grabbed the gun, and that's been the case. Like everybody I go shoot these guns with, mm -hmm. they grab the SAR nine. Like I've never to this day, all these events I've done, collaborations I've done, I've never had a single person grab a SAR nine, shoot and say, "Ah, oh, I don't like this," and put it down. I've never had one. I'm not saying there isn't a person who wouldn't do that. Yeah. But you know. Not everybody likes the polymer guns. Some people like mm -hmm. the uh, whatever. I'm just saying there are a lot of, you know, there are some very well-known, awesome brands out there. Mm -hmm. SAR-9 is a direct competitor competitor to those. Yeah. Some high, you know, so that's what I'm trying I mean, I'll go out on a limb here and say I like it better than a Glock, but that's not really surprising coming from me. No. Yeah, you, <laughs> not, not <realistic. laughs> yes. you just say, you're, you're very biased there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, 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 it, and for the price point, guys. Like, let's talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a NATO gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. The at the factory when they develop these guns, like the story of SAR nine is actually very cool, right? When the Turkish military was going to go to uh, go get a uh, co um, contract mm -hmm. uh, of a known brand, right? And then the <laughs> the president of Turkey just like, hey, wait a minute, we literally have the largest factory here. Why wouldn't we do mm -hmm. something for our own military, right? And so Sar Smalls gets a contract and the R&D team goes to work and they start getting all these known brands, right? They, they study them. What makes them great and where they lack at, right? Which we all can be better, right? Yeah. 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 And they just come up with all these, they, how do I say, like they, they just come up with Sar 9. Right. Right. They see what works, what doesn't work. Let's put them all together, create something best of all the worlds. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's how SAR-9 was born. And then they put it through at the factory, 150,000 live fire torture test. Right. And they, I think they replace the springs and all that, whatever. And the gun handles it and they call it the, the most rigorously tested handgun out there. So moving on from that, that's a factory, right? The factory that do their own testing, that, that's mm -hmm. different. NATO, when, whenever you submit a gun to a NATO, they, they test. Just like New England, right? New, New England, you, they actually test guns. How do I know that? Because SAR-9 just went through their testing and passed. Oh, okay. You can't sell a gun there unless the gun is submitted and they test it on their own over there, right? So NATO grabs it and NATO does their own testing of 90,000 rounds against a bunch of known brands. SAR-9 takes the win out of all those brands. Nice. Really? Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. said how many rounds? 90,000. 90,000. They said 92, but they say about 90, but I'm being told 92. But 90,000 rounds. Yeah. And they, w the only thing they replace is the internal springs, yeah. which is fully expected on any gun. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, again, not to crap on any other brands out there. Right. Just talking about SAR-9, I would depend my life on it all day long. It works. I've never had a SAR-9 I never had problems with any of these SAR-9s that I fired. 
And every video like we do, what I do, I don't have my own SAR 9. Yeah. Everywhere I go, a territory manager meets me there and I open a brand new one, just grab it. And mm -hmm. that's the one I shoot. Yeah. You literally witnessed it. We yeah. did that mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. I yeah, opened the box. You had a bunch brand of new. It was like you just grab a random one. Here you go. Here you go. Yep. Here you go. No yeah. oil, nothing. You just no. grab them. You shoot them. Yeah, no, this and they work. dry as hell. Yeah. Yep. And they work. They work. Uh, so that's the story of SAR 9. And uh, somebody said, and I love this. He says, SAR 9 is the best kept secret out there. Right I mean, now. I mean, for real, you know, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, it's, it's, it's an affordable price point, super ergonomic, obviously very accurate, shoots well, reliable. I mean, what else do you want from a handgun, dude? Yeah. I and, mean, and on top of that, I mean, you're getting a, a great value too. I mean, what, what all comes in the box again? Okay. So the X models, yeah. uh, the MSRP of an X model is 599. Yeah. It comes with, uh, well, first of all, it's cut slides, yeah. helps with the recoil. Mm -hmm. It's, um, got the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, red dot holes on there, so red dot ready yeah. at various colors specific to X models. And it comes with a weapon mounted light, big red case, weapon mounted light, That's cool. uh, double mag pouch, and a holster. Yeah, That's an X model. But uh, if you get a regular SAR 9, the MSRP is 449 so You're not going to get any different reliability of X or SAR 9. They're the same thing, right? right. Just one comes with dot ready, cut slides. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Precisely. Precisely. So, here, here you have a gun. You can get it for four forty nine. That's the MSRP for it, for a gun that. Just put. Hey, listen. Don't listen to me. Put them against some big dogs. Yeah, I mean, I, comparable. I mean, obviously. We just did in our yeah. um, our yeah. lo loadout. We yeah. Put against a. Oh yeah, we put against another and Sig the and the Glock. Yeah. No, it just yeah. is a great gun. Mm -hmm. and Basically, I mean, it deserves to be among those crowds. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. No, and it, I mean, dude, it shoots great. And the trigger, too. The factory trigger is fantastic. Yep. It, yeah. it really is great. I mean, so, <laughs> like, I mean, everything about it, I mean, it just impressed the hell out of me. And uh, and, yeah. it, and it shot great. And, yeah, so, I mean, that's that's cool. I'm glad you made that recommendation because I would have been pissed if I lost that soon. Thanks. So, I don't know why I did that. We should have just. I know. Should have been like, oh, man, you're doing great with that We should have been like, oh, darn, another 100-yard <laughs> shot. Yeah. So <laughs> that that yeah. would have been, been it. And I would have been like, okay, you know what? Scratch this video. <laughs> yeah, we're not posting this. No. Yeah, yeah, 45 minutes in. Sorry, Clint's like, I lost. I'm done. I think after 30 minutes, I was done mentally. Oh, I was, I was just hanging in there. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's the other thing, too. You're like you're saying mindset, right? Like like yeah. if this was a, you know, like we were we were having fun. It was a game. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, my God. Okay, we're not losing. <laughs> it's like If you watch yeah. the, vi like my, when you watch the video or unedited version, I'm doing fine. Just good to go at the beginning. And then there's this downfall of Kaya. Yeah. I'm just like not doing good anymore. Was that after yeah. you tripped and fell? I'm sorry. Why do we have to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, just, yeah. I mean, it you looked good. What? You know, you're putting it's like a, a lot of enthusiasm. Mental downfall after yeah. a physical it's, downfall. Yeah. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter if you fall. What no, matters no, if you no. don't get back up? See, Agreed. Look at that. Yeah. Mm. You hear that? But your mental. Mm. Wow. That's, good. You, That's that, strong words. Strong <laughs> words. See, see, but now, now I'm disappointed in you because you mentally shut down and didn't come back up. So that means at that point I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> that means I was still there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, right. so SAR, so there's SAR, uh, SAR Lamaz, right? Well, SAR, SAR Lamaz is the, uh, the parent company. In over, Turkey. Yeah. And SAR the, USA is here. Yeah. And the SAR Lamaz is the defense contractor over there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So all I mean, the way up to aerospace engineering. So that's cool. So yeah, so yeah. I, like I didn't know what all SARS and Mos did, you oh. know, until you and I talked a little bit and you're talking about like yeah, anti-aircraft, you're talking about like aerospace, Absolutely. you're talking about like some big stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that's pretty cool. And so then they have this kind of like a uh, little bit smaller um, company over here, SAR USA, that's bringing, you know, importing what you guys can. Yep. Uh, thanks, ATF. Uh, <laughs> for, um, and I guess there's probably export laws too, stuff like that, that Turkey yeah. might have. I mean, do you, what are the guns, gun laws like in Turkey? Well, dude, I don't live there, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I forgot about that. That's good. Yes, I don't. <laughs> I, uh, I, but I, I think, uh, obviously mm. much more strict, yeah. right? Uh, to carry a gun. I mean, you got to jump through some hoops there mm -hmm. to yeah. carry a gun and then you got to pay yearly fee for it or something like that. Mm. And oh yeah, it's very, 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 very limited. And you can't have any rifled uh, rifle, yeah. right? It's uh, like so a rifle calibers. Really? Completely illegal, just for military and law enforcement only. Oh, wow. uh, anything ballistic, night vision, military and law enforcement only. Mm. 
Yeah, well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's one thing I like about the United States is at least in some states, you know, you got like constitutional carry, you got your live yeah. for your die states, you know, yeah. and uh, uh, which I think is freaking awesome. And it's like, hey, are you a U.S. citizen? Yeah. Are you at least 18 years of age? Yeah. OK, cool. Go get, go get a gun. Yep. And I'm like, you know, and some people might like, oh, my God, that's absolutely insane. And it's like, I don't think people understand, again, mindset. Yeah. If, if we actually had better teachings for our children growing up uh, at school or whatever else it is, and you actually teach them how to be a good citizen yep. and contribute to society versus maybe, I don't know, take, take, take and be a little douchebag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in some situations, uh, you would realize that actually owning a firearm and having that mindset of self responsibility and holding yourself accountable for your actions and also your own defense, uh, your, you know, your own self defense and those that you care for, you're actually producing better people. Right. And carrying a firearm, you and I are in the mindset of like, that, that also contributes to physical fitness. That oh, yeah. also means that we're going to be a little bit more aware in public surroundings. Huge responsibility, you know I mean? man. So, it's, so a lot of like people that. think it's cool to have yeah. this on, on your back, right? Dude, it brings such a big responsibility along yeah. with it. Like, you got to do a bunch of things. And, and I got to say this, though, like anybody who's listening or watching, we get firearms to protect ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And it does a very, or they do a great job of protecting us. But what, as a former law enforcement officer here, I dealt with a lot of stolen firearm, yeah. a lot in the hands of wrong people, stolen mm -hmm. from yeah. good law abiding people. Uh, what do you do to protect it? Mm -hmm. That's what I always say. Yeah. So handle it responsibly and store it responsibly yeah. from your children or whoever, or even potential burglars and get a safe, whatever. Just saying it's there to protect you and it does a great job protecting you you need to protect it too. Yeah. Also. So yeah. that's what I say. No, I, no it's, you're, abs you're absolutely right. And uh, so SAR USA has a lot of offerings. You know, I yeah. mean, like you guys have, like you come, you got your competitive side of things, you got your defensive side of things, sport, whatever it might be, you know. Um, uh, so my question to you is, what is your overall, your number one favorite SAR firearm? Oh, my personal? Yep. Okay. It's like asking... I know you're a parent like, Hey, which kid is your favorite? I think oh, they all have my it. parents definitely have a favorite. It's you. I know definitely that. not. <laughs> <laughs> that was a uh, sarcasm. By <laughs> just joking. Uh. Now I, uh, uh, absolutely without a doubt for me is a SAR nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I reason being about 11 years ago, I got in law enforcement. I was introduced to, uh, a polymer frame strike fire pistols. Mm -hmm. And that's what I carried all these years. So that's all I know. Yeah. Right. I didn't, I know Katie wouldn't believe I'm not that old to have revolvers uh, back in the law enforcement, you know, the, I don't think you're old. You told me just a minute ago, like 85 <laughs> or 86, were you 85? You were drinking coffee and smoking cigars. That's an old man thing. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. What about, what about sipping but the I scotch said, too? I yeah. said you yeah. didn't look like you were as old as you are, remember? True, true. I mean, you, you conflict yourself all the time. So I'm, I'm confused myself over here. No, I'm but, not confused. Okay. Do I, uh, one last time, am I old or am I young? You're not old. But you do think, so, yeah, you I'm do not old young. people things sometimes, like True. eating at diners and drinking what? coffee and smoking cigars. Eating at diners? What is? It's an old people thing. I'm sorry, then I'm old. Yeah. And I'm proud of it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm proud of it. I right. love diners, dude. <laughs> but uh, um, so, uh, Star Nights, yeah. right? Uh, that's, that's what I love. Love that thing. And uh, can I give the top three? <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Do have it. at it. Okay. Uh, right after Star Nine, I would say K twelve. Drum, drum roll. There you go. I knew you it, dude. It. I knew. It. I knew. As soon as like, I was like, dude, the K twelve is sexy. That thing is dude. just a mm. yeah. K twelve is. Yeah. Oh my god! What an awesome. That's our competition lineup. Like yeah. four point seven inch barrel. It's, it's heavy and really nice. Flared yeah. magwell. Uh, great, great gun. Uh, and there, oh wait, all of our firearms like handguns and. PC, they're all nine millimeter, except my number three favorite, yeah. K245. Yeah, yeah. Now that's a 45 caliber full metal, all metal gun, mm -hmm. and 14 plus one. Yeah. Now that's a capacity right there, yeah. and when it comes to value, mm -hmm. um, you can't beat it. It's just awesome. So that's my third favorite. So Star 9, all the, there's a bunch of variations oh, of right, Star 9 right, right. compact oh, yeah. and whatever. So mm -hmm. Star 9s, K12, and 
K245. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't know which one was gonna be your actual favorite, if it was gonna be the SAR-9 or the K12, because I know you and I share the love for the K12. Yeah. Uh, but I, will, I gotta tell you that SAR-9CX right now is kind of like at the top of my list on the SAR pistols. Because, You're getting it? Yeah, I, I'm definitely getting one, like 100%. Um, uh, CX or the, just the regular X? So I, I kind of want to go for the full size one. Yeah, you know? the regular X. Yeah, yeah. So I think which color for, would you go? You had all the colors. Yeah, I, had all the colors. I like the green one. I actually I, like the green a lot. A hundred percent. If I was personally yeah. purchasing one, I would get that OD green or I don't know. The, oh, the platinum white one cool, is though. really yeah. growing on yeah, me. Yeah, the white but, one's cool. I got my Stormtrooper yeah. helmet over there. That's going to be a great that. little combination. But the white one's going to get dirty though if you use it. I know. If it doesn't get dirty, there's a problem. True. Yeah, but then you might as well be. get like a. It, it's just no. No, dirty I, means I, good. Dirty means dirty good. Dirty means yeah. good, but I, I would be too OCD to have a white firearm. Mm -hmm. So, Katie, what, which color would you go for? What, what are you going for? I like the, the bronze looking one. That yeah, is bronze. actually a good. Yeah, yeah, the bronze is a good one. That yeah. was. Well, you guys offer so many different colors and everything. Like, you can customize it to be whatever the heck you want, too. So, yep. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. um, uh, hey, uh, people like your face on it. Oh so what? I have to get your face engraved on one. My face on a gun? Yeah. How about my eyes or the sights, the rear sights? Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be That would be hilarious. Look that would be so <laughs> creepy. Hilarious. Oh, that would be. That's awesome, dude. Damn. But no, man. Okay, so outside of the SAR lineup, nothing SAR related. Yeah. Favorite favorite firearm. Number one. Outside of SAR, yeah. um, definitely I'd say my, uh, well, that was FPI specific, mm -hmm. right? I had the Glock 17M. Yeah. That's a modified version of it that I liked because I had the, uh, it's like sentimental value like attached to that thing. That yeah. was my Quantico issued gun. Um, that's, yeah, I love that. But outside outside of obviously when it comes to hang, uh, going out of hang guns, I would say, Go big or go home, right? Mm -hmm. Barrett 50 cal. <laughs> 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 M107, please. Dude, yeah. yes, absolutely. That's, that's it. Yeah, you should, you've, last, time you, last time you visited us, you, you put a couple rounds down range with the, uh, was it the M82 or M107? I don't remember, but. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Does it shoot 50? Yeah, semi-auto, semi -auto. <laughs> yeah, magazine yeah. fed. Yeah, I'd awesome. love to do it again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Somehow. we will. We will. So for sure, but um, uh, but cool, man. I think uh, we can go ahead and start wrapping it up there, though. I think we've hit a lot about it, and we've got a little bit of a uh, introduction into Kaya and hey. uh, and SAR USA, you know. And I think this was a lot of fun. Uh, fun's not over yet. I think we're gonna head to the range here in a little bit, and uh, I mean, we got a couple more rounds of that 50 cal if you want to mag dump it, you know. Oh my God, I would love to. Let's do it, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I came here actually. That was yeah. the reason. Oh, okay, well, that's, wait, that's, you told that's me it was to see my husband. It's all lies. Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> 50. Yeah. yeah, and uh, so uh. and uh, listeners, if you guys haven't seen the video that we're talking about, where Katie, myself, and Kaya uh, all played that tactical game of horse, go check it out because it does, I think, really open up um, ideas for like mm -hmm. what to do at the range. Because you see a lot of people doing like static type shooting and stuff, yep. and like that's all fun and it has its place. But yep. the moment now that you're over there trying to challenge yourself and challenge others, you're mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, cool. I need to be able to get off this shot, but I need to do it in a manner in which they can't do it, you yep. know? And so all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to come up with different types of shooting positions, maybe movement, stuff like that. I mean, you and I, we, we integrated like running and gunning and, yep. you know, and, uh, and doing it in a safe manner, of course. Now, granted, we're also blessed and fortunate to have a range that allows us to do that at take aim training. And those, yeah. those, are, those are excellent people out there. So we understand that we are uh, unique in that, uh, but they allow that for everybody. And I know there's a lot of outdoor ranges too that you might have to take some classes for and become like a uh, type of, uh, I guess you could say, a member, you know, and, uh, and then they'll start to allow you to do that. But um, but even at indoor ranges, we talked about a little bit, like they have uh, different games that you can play on targets. You know, you can have two shooters on yeah. one target playing Battleship, uh, Connect 4, or whatever it might yep, be. You yep, know? Yep. Uh, things like that are pretty fun. Tic-tac-toe, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I... Like, uh, the SAR USA is going to be uh, very soon bringing the uh, manufacturing to the United States, right? Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say something about that because we're going to have our own facility, and I'm going to do a lot of, a uh, bunch of different kind of drills there. But yeah, SAR USA is bringing the manufacturing to the United States. These guns are going to be 100% made in the United States. Oh, cool. Up to 50% uh, or near, let's just say. Projected date is by the end of this year. It could be maybe bleed over to 2023 20, right, as yeah. well, but it's happening, and then... It's gonna be 100 percent made here, the United States, guys. Because we have, cool. SAR USA is a separate company has purchased the technology from SAR Samas. Okay. Yeah. And we'll be 
making it here. So nice. when that happened, you know, actually that was the other question I wanted to ask you too, before we hopped off is like upcoming, you know, fun stuff like that, that you might be able to shine some light on. So that's one big thing. Anything else that you want to talk about? Like anything yep. that you could let us know about? Guys, I am, we are working on, and it's me. I proposed, which, you know, I'm not going to give the name here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a specific gun that's going to be modified in a way it's going to have as its own own special series i literally got an email about it again t uh, today uh i hope to showcase it at shot show mm. okay uh, a gun and then we have another gun which i can actually talk about that our sar 9 socom the sp what they call it socom gun mm -hmm. it's uh, designed by the turkish special forces uh with the help of amazing gun it's got the uh Cut slides, yep. cut uh, um, cut for a red dot. Okay. Uh, suppressor height sights. Oh, height so, sights. So you've got a co-witness? Co uh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Thread a barrel uh, mm -hmm. for a can. Flared magwell, but very subtle. Not like the uh, the, the, the Glock, uh, um, the Gen 5. You know, yeah. they're slightly flared. No, it's more than that, right? It's, you'll see, and it looks okay. super, super, super sexy. And I know we uh, kind of showcase the a little bit older version that with you uh, during SHOT Show, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got the latest and the version that's coming out. Um, so those two, and of course, you know, someday there's no projected date for it to 109 2.0. Okay. So we're, uh, we're guys. Dude, so, all right, so first of all, the 109 is awesome. That's your, that's your PCC. That's, yeah. Uh, and it is. So what's, what's the 2.0 gonna offer? Oh, it's uh, too early to talk oh, about, but I, okay. it, it's uh, it's going to be amazing. Okay. But too early to talk about that. They're working on that. There's a lot of exciting things coming out. We, As our president say, as President Sario say, we really are everywhere. Yeah. And you're hearing more. I mean, last year, did you hear this much about Sario say? Last not year compared to this year? Not oh, this year you guys have been blowing up. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to be more and more and more. We are everywhere. Bringing the manufacturing here. We're serious. We're here to stay. And uh, everybody just uh, grab some popcorn. Oh man, that's exciting! Yeah, that's really exciting. I want I the, the more and more you talk about that SOCOM too, like especially with the thread to barrel, the yeah. the the suppressor height sights and everything, and co-witnessing availability. Yeah, I'm just go ahead and put my name down on the list. Uh, yeah. Oh, we will yeah, shoot yeah, together. Yeah, I promise. Yeah. All right, good, good, good. Yeah. Um, cool, man. Uh, with that. You know, I mean, like I said, it's, it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And one thing I want to go ahead and ask too, is like, so th you said maybe 2023 timeframe for this new manufacturing in us. Yeah. So we have our own facility and they're working on it right now to create the infrastructure for at least like, I know up to 50%, they're going to start like very, very soon. Yeah. Right. And then the, 100%, I don't know the projected time for it, but mm -hmm. up to 50%, it, sh it could also bleed into 2023. Uh, there's no specific date on it, but it's very, very soon. We're starting to uh, bring the manufacturing to the United States. Are you able to tell us where it might be? Uh, currently, it's Miami. Okay. Miami so, area, uh, So are we going to get an invite, go do a little bit of a tour, get, maybe see, see what we can show? I don't video? see why not, as okay. long as obviously, whatever we can show, I would be very happy to. Uh, yeah. we, and we're going to do some shooting too, right? There's no way we can get together and, and not, not shoot. shoot. Okay, all right, cool. Just, just wanted to make sure that was that, well, that was the case. Yeah, all right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome, Kaya, man. Thank yeah. you so much for hopping on, man. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. Glad to glad to make your friendship over these uh, over yeah. this past what year? I think you and I really like hit yep. it off, and uh, you know, and that's that's super cool. Something I really appreciate about the industry too is you know you get to meet these these yeah. people and you know have such wonderful backgrounds too. I mean, again, like you said, you are the epitome of like the American dream. I mean, you're doing you. you're doing everything that you wanted to do. I mean. Since you were a kid, you knew yeah. you, you you fell in love with the Western culture. You knew you wanted to move to America, be American, uh, become a cop, become you know an, an FBI special agent. And now you're doing this cool ass job. I mean, they would like you know, yeah, dude, you're 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 I'm awesome. I'm thankful. Man. Yeah, I'm I'm honored, humbled, and uh, truly, as I grew, as I got higher, I got smaller. You yeah, it's it just it's a great opportunity. I mean, I'm very honored and grateful to be where I'm at right now. Yeah. And of course, I do same. Likewise, right? I meet awesome people like you guys. It's a, it's a great job, and uh, I hope to be in it for long term. Let's yeah. just say. Yeah. yeah well, we we hope so too, man. You're yeah. always welcome, of course. 
Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Thank guys. You. So, hey, head on over to ClassicFarms.com, your number one stop shop, or number one shop stop, number one stop. How, how am I supposed to say that? Both works. Yeah, that works. Yeah. We are your shop and number one stop oh. for all of your Second Amendment needs, wants, joys, ammunition, apparel, range gear, whatever whatever you could do. Uh, we got 50 cows on there. You know that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We got we got SAR USA on there, of course. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, you guys, uh, we also have free guns. So, again, sign up for our giveaways. Utilize, uh, <laughs> if you're watching, You'll be able to see the code word down below. If you're listening, it's a uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you can type that in and uh, see if it works for you. Just try a podcast and see what, see what happens. Uh, but anyway, we'll leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at classicfarms.com.